I'm standing beside this incredible six-wheeled beast. This is manufactured in China by a company called Xpeng Aerot, and it's known as the ground mothership. And inside the back is a flying eVTOL. Can you imagine that? Now you're probably thinking, wow, this like cyber looking crazy van, that could just be a concept. There's no way that a land aircraft carrier, modular flying car would ever make it to production. But let me tell you, that's where you're wrong. Because this thing is in production right now. This six-wheeled vehicle here is not only six-wheel drive, but all six wheels help in the steering of the vehicle. So you have rear wheel steering as well as front wheel steering. We've got all kinds of cameras all over the vehicle. Notice these motorized arms that actually extend out from the vehicle to give you additional viewpoints down the side, but they also fold in for easier storage and aerodynamics. Now you also notice that there's no side view mirrors. Well, that's where this camera comes in. There's actually cameras on the bottom and on the back side of it as well. Very ergonomic recessed door handles here down the side. And then of course you can see that the back is a clamshell design opened up and we're gonna take a look at that right now. So I'm around the back end and as you can see, the van is opened up in a clamshell format. We have kind of this barn door configuration on the bottom that's being run by these electronically powered struts that again, this all opens with power. So very little human input required. The top here, power opens this clamshell design here. It's got tinted glass around the top, so it looks cool. But inside here, this is the VTOL, the entire component folds up so small that it fits in the back of this six wheel van. Now this again makes sense because we have six wheels in this vehicle and that, that additional trailing axle that, that has been added on is there and it's designed to help carry the weight that's in the back of this vehicle. So you're spreading out the load of that Avital unit over three axles versus two on a traditional vehicle. That makes sense. So inside here, this unit completely compresses and then it has uh, rails that it sits on inside the vehicle. It fastens down so you don't have to worry about it jostling down while you're driving on those roads in and out of the trails and, and wherever you are out in the wilderness or out having fun with this vehicle. This is designed, this bus itself, the van or whatever you want to call it, it is designed to take on some moderate off-roading. It's all-wheel drive, meaning that all three axles help drive the vehicle. So you can drive this in snow, mud, rain, up steep hills, down hills. And again, it runs off a uh, electronic-based powertrain. This is an entirely electric powered VTOL, but the unit itself, the bus itself is actually a hybrid. Now it has a gasoline engine on board that allows you to not only charge the bus itself and drive it electronically, electrically, but it allows you to charge this unit here for, I believe, up to six or seven flights. So you can be out in the middle of nowhere and you can shoot up and check out whatever you want to see. Maybe it's the Grand Canyon, maybe it's some mountains, some waterfalls, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can do it multiple times you don't have to go home after one little flight so that's really cool and very thoughtful as well what I love about it is that you don't have to be a pro you don't have to be a mechanic you don't have to be some genius with a whole bunch of hours and hours of training it's actually really straightforward again it's all basic you know touch of a button type of operation and uh, and I think something like this can really take off in the marketplace because it's just gonna bring a whole new world of opportunity and a new way to explore our world. Now we're gonna take a look at the VTOL itself, so join me on the other side. So this is it guys, this is what is in the back of that six-wheeled incredible van. This is an Evitol unit built by Xpeng Aerot and it's run by 
six rotors above and has room for two passengers inside. Now it has both autonomous capabilities as well as manual control. So if you wanna get out there and have a little fun out in the wilderness, you certainly can. Or if you just wanna simply plug in your GPS coordinates, this unit will simply lightly lift off and comfortably take you to your destination. Now, I foresee a lot of unique uses for a unit like this. I, of course, th I I, of course, can think of uh, uses in uh, mountain ranges. I recently took a trip up into Western Canada, up into the Rocky Mountains. Then I can see that a unit like this would come in clutch for a mountainside rescue. Now, right now, flight times are estimated at about 15 minutes, although Xpeng Aeron expects those t flight times to increase. Now, if you're wondering about licensing, well, what do I need to drive this vehicle? Well, the bus that it comes in just requires a normal driver's license and at this point just a normal pilot's license for a personal aircraft is all you need to fly this unit. I asked do you need a helicopter license? They're like well it's technically not a helicopter even though we do have rotors six of them it doesn't operate exactly like a helicopter so at this point they're calling it simply an avtol and as technology like this becomes more popular and more prominent in society i'm sure we'll see a lot more regulation with organizations like the faa coming out for specialized licenses for units like this we saw something similar when small size drones first came to market there was there was no regulation in fact there was a lot of chaos and then so what happened was you know you had municipalities as well as states provinces kind of fighting over what exactly was going to go on and now we have more of a standardized drone licensing program and i'm sure we're going to see something similar with this unit right here now let's take a look inside we're going to turn the handle here and open up into the passenger cabin we've got large panoramic viewpoints here out the sides and the front and the first thing you're met with is a gigantic touchscreen interface. This is going to have full GPS navigation. It has all of your communications, altimeters. It's got all of your flight data, anything you're going to need on your short-term adventure. Again, guys, this is not a long-distance flight unit. This is something that's going to be kind of that short little 10 minutes up the mountain. I'm too lazy to hike up, but I want to go get some amazing views just for a couple hours on a Saturday afternoon. And I'm going to jump in my Avital. I'm going to scoot up the mountain. I'm going to get some amazing shots of some waterfalls. I'm going to go and drop somebody off on a ski hill and they're going to ski down. This is the type of unit that you can do with that. So it's, it's very recreational. Um, there's also going to be some usage points in levels like commercial as well as industrial. And we'll see those come to fruition over time, but this is something that's engineered for the personal user. Right now, pricing for both units, it comes as a complete set. So both the van and the eVTOL, it's about 300,000 US dollars estimated at this point. So coming back to the interior, you have a full five point restraint harness. So you have over the shoulder straps in addition to your lap belt. So it's gonna keep you firmly uh, planted into the unit. Uh, very comfortable seats. They've used kind of a kind of a suede Alcantara. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is it provides a nice, rich, comfortable feeling, but more importantly, it keeps you firmly planted on the seat. The last thing you want is going to be sliding all around because remember, this is not like a like a normal vehicle where you're on the ground and you might have some up and down or maybe side to side. This thing's going to be moving all around. So you want to make sure that you're secured into that seat. And so by choosing this type of non-slip material, it's going to solve that problem for you. Now, looking at the controls here, very, very simple. All you have in the center is that singular joystick for manual operation. And then there's a couple of switches, of course, and then just they're more or less built in as redundancy if anything happens with the touchscreen, but the touchscreen is going to be your main point of contact and it's going to give you all the schematics and everything you'll need to operate the vehicle. The cool thing is that with this, you always have that home point programmed into your GPS coordinates because it always knows where the van is and it, can, and it communicates with it. Now, as far as unloading it from the van, it's extremely easy. It's actually a one button operation. So when all these arms are folded in and the VTOL is in the back of the van, you just simply hit a button, back of the van opens up, the unit comes out, and then you're able to set up and take off and go for your flight. Same goes for when you return. It's gonna park behind the van, and then it's gonna bring it back into the vehicle. Just very, very simple operation, no special tools, and really not a whole lot of training needed as well. So I just want to talk about the overall form factor of this unit here right now. We talked about the interior. Uh, we talked about the seats, uh, the center joystick, the controls, the display. We've got a couple of grab handles, comfortable armrests, and the seat material. But if you look at the overall 
The overall shape and form factor, it's actually very compact. And if you needed to, for whatever reason, you could actually have this unit ejected into your garage or your workshop so you could use the van to transport other items. And now you have kind of a big cargo bay in the back of your six-wheeled van. So it gives you a lot of kind of um, options and a lot of flexibility with the package. And for 300000 I don't know, could you buy a Cybertruck and an airplane for 300000 It's kind of along those lines and understandable where they're coming in with the price point. As far as maintenance, it's going to be very low maintenance. Obviously, you're going to have your inspections to make sure your rotors uh, don't have any damage or anything like that. Uh, but with electric motors differently than a gasoline-powered uh, aircraft, you don't have to worry about changing any fluids. There's no regular spark plugs. There's no timing issues. So I'm actually currently right now taking my flight, uh, my pilot's license, and uh, a lot of the lessons right now are checking the engine and making sure that that gasoline engine isn't going to fail while you're mid-flight. But you don't have that problem because this is fully electric, and it's actually a very simple construction. It may look really complicated, but in its essence, just like an electric car, you don't have the regular maintenances that come along with combustion. So overall, we have a really cool concept. I can't wait to see more items like this come to market. I know Xpeng Era is hard at work. They're developing and, and kind of putting the finishing touches on this package, and hopefully we'll see it available in North America. We're here at CES 2025. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you in the next one.